Hi, folks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining from today. Uh, my name is Loki Mayberg. I'm from the Teams platform team, and I'm here to talk to you folks about the changes we're making to the website tab in Teams. It's not really a demo per se, but useful information you should be aware of. Uh, let's go over what, we're, what I'm going to cover today. First, uh, some of you may not know what the website tab is in Teams, so I'm going to go over that first. I'll also talk about the problems we're running into today. Um, there we go. Next, uh, we're going to talk about what we're changing. And then um, I'm also going to be answering some of the frequently asked questions about this change. So what is the website tab? In a chat or channel, you can click on the plus button to add a tab. Next, you'll select the website app from the list of apps, avail apps available. The website app has been, it's been around for quite a while now. And then next, you're going to give your tab a name. Uh, you'll enter in the website URL uh, that you wish to pin. So in this case, I'm adding the Microsoft Math Solver website. And then once you've pinned it, um, you'll have pinned the website as a tab in Teams, which renders the website's contents inside of the Teams app. It does what it says on the tin, but not exactly because we're running into some problems and I want to talk about that. <clears throat> so we've always had some reliability problems with the website tab in the classic version of Teams. Uh, these problems range from websites not loading in the web version of Teams to not loading in the desktop version of Teams due to conditional access policies. Um, there were many other smaller issues too. Uh, but over the years, we've addressed many of these issues. Uh, the website tab was also a bit of a security and privacy issue for users in the classic version of Teams because users could pin any website in Teams, which could be malicious. And we addressed that with a banner asking the user to be sure they trust the URL before using the website tab in Teams. But the website tab is starting to have issues for very valid reasons. So let's take a look at what's happening. The new version of Teams is built on web standard best practices. So this means that if a website doesn't want to be loaded inside of Teams, we have to adhere to that request not to be loaded inside of Teams. So what a user sees is this blank screen with the option to open the website in the new browser tab. Uh, we see this in particular around pages that require a user to be logged in to see their content. Um, in fact, it's actually good security practice for most pages that require sign-in. And we started noticing more and more web pages preventing themselves from loading inside of Teams. Over the last few months, we've received a lot of incidents and bug reports around this issue. If a website used to work or is currently working in the website tab, there is no guarantee that it won't one day break. For those that want a more technical answer, the new Teams uses a heavily modified custom iframe implementation but it's still possible for a website to do frame busting where they detect that they're being run inside of an iframe or being run inside of Teams and fail to render. And we can't stop them from doing that. So the previous technology we were using the classic version of Teams to load website tabs is also changing because it's no longer considered best practice. That piece of technology was the WebView tag in Chromium, uh, which is being deprecated. So we would have needed to make the change in the classic version of Teams regardless, but we're focusing our attention on the new version of Teams since that's where we're all heading this year. So in short, more and more websites are choosing not to load inside of Teams, leading to a confusing and broken user experience. We've received a lot of complaints about it, and we've explored over a half dozen options, but it all comes back to respecting the websites and their users' security and privacy. So about a week ago, we sent out a message center post to IT admins explaining the issue. Uh, the post outlines our plans to begin, to begin rolling out changes starting in April. Since then, we've received a lot of questions about the change and there's also some misunderstandings. So at the end of this presentation, I'm going to answer some of the frequently asked questions we've been receiving. But first I want to dig into the what we're changing part of this message. So to be clear, we are not removing the website tab. We are changing how it works in Teams. The website tab had two benefits, bookmarking links and opening websites in Teams. 
because loading websites in Teams is no longer an option, we're going to lean into bookmarking and aim to create an experience around bookmarks. Now, I can't show the final experience on this call as we're still iterating, learning, and refining that experience, but I will try to explain what you can expect at a high level. Keep in mind, these wireframes are deliberately high level to help illustrate the user flow changes, but the details of the final user experience and interface are still being iterated on, not ready to share yet. So today, when you click on a tab that's powered by the website tab, we navigate you to that tab, load the website, and display a banner with a button to open the website in the browser. Keep in mind that that was the happy path what we're seeing is that more and more websites do not wish to be loaded inside of Teams and instead show a blank screen. With the only workaround for users being that open and browser button that's in the banner. When we start rolling out the changes in April, users will instead open the web page in their browser of choice where things are guaranteed to work. Users will have access to their keychain, browser plugins, conditional access policies will be properly enforced. Overall, just a much more reliable experience. For Edge users, if possible, we'll try to ensure that the Teams chat follows you into the browser with our new Edge app feature. Um, for some, especially those that were seeing blank screens before, they may see this as an, as an improvement. For others, such as those which haven't had difficulty loading websites in Teams, they may see this as a step backwards. We recognize and really empathize with them. Keep in mind that just because a website loads in Teams today, it may not in the future. And the change would have needed to be made in both the classic and the new version of Teams eventually. For those that need to show web content inside of Teams, there are a few other options available, um, such as using the app instead. So what I mean by that is using the Planner app or Jira app, instead of pinning a Planner URL or Jira URL using the website tab. Apps other than the website tab will continue to work as is. Um, there's also the option to create a custom Teams app for your organization by wrapping that website URL inside a Teams app manifest and using our client SDK if needed to create a custom tab. Before these changes roll out, we'll be putting announcements in the website tab experience to make users aware of the change. Um, okay, let's move on to some of the frequently asked questions we've been receiving and I'll try to answer them. Have we tried? <laughs> Have we tried ABC? Uh, most likely, yes, but we are actively listening to feedback. Uh, thank you to everyone that shared their feedback either through support channels or over social media. Both are good. The feedback we've been receiving over the last few days has been really great. Some of it has been tough and candid, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, it's how we learn, and we've learned so much from the feedback already. Just to reiterate, uh, we've explored over a half dozen options in earnest, ranging from introducing new browser standards to UX changes like a toggle and many other options in between. Uh, we're trying to strike a balance between addressing the issues faced by users whose website tabs are not loading, adhering to the request of websites not wanting to be loaded in Teams, ensuring we do what's best for users' privacy and security, while also empathizing deeply with those that have come to rely on the website tab for their day-to-day -day operations. Again, thank you for your feedback. We are listening. Does the web, does this mean the websites won't work in tabs? What about custom apps? Uh, we're only changing the website tab, custom apps, including first party, third party, line of business apps, they'll, they won't be impacted. Um, why is the change only happening in the new Teams? Uh, again, we would have needed to make the change in the classic version of Teams 2 uh, if we were actively, if we weren't actively moving towards the new version of Teams. Um, why was EDU tenants excluded from the April rollout? How do I know if I'm an EDU tenant? So after speaking with EDU education customers, uh, we empathize with them a lot. Uh, we realized we had to be sensitive about making changes while schools and universities were actively in session across the Northern and Southern hemispheres. Uh, we'll have more information to share about um, for education customers at a later date. As for determining if you're an education tenant, uh, your tenant needs to have academic licenses, A1 to A5, um, for either students or faculty. 
If you're an IT admin, you should be able to see an education section in the Teams admin portal, or does a customer have access to our education features um, in the Teams app, such as assignments, class notebook, et cetera? Um, we'll have more to share when we're ready about the new, what the new experience will look and feel like. And the next question was, will this impact GovClouds? Uh, yes, it will. It, it will impact GovClouds, and we are listening to feedback from our GovCloud customers. Um, the change is happening in April. Can you be more specific? So yes, we will start the rollout in April, and we're going to take it slow and listen to feedback. We will be putting messaging in the website tab experience itself to give users a heads up about this change too. Those who are part of our tap, TAP program, uh, you'll be getting the change earlier, and we'll, we'll be listening to feedback from, uh, from those folks as well. What happens to old website tabs? The existing website tabs will be migrated to this new experience. Um, and then finally, our, our changes happening to the mobile versions of Teams. At, at present, we have no plans to make changes to the mobile experience of Teams and the website tab on iOS or Android. That's it. OK, I um, also just wanted to share some short links uh, with you folks in case you wanted to learn more about this change uh, from our blog posts or point customers to any of our known issues. Thank you.